Hey, it's Dry Bear. We're continuing our series covering every weapon in Wild Hearts, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Claw Blade. We'll go over all the basics and mechanics for the weapon, some combos and utilizations for it, as well as how you can interact with Karakuri to get the most out of the Claw Blade. If you found value in this video, leave a like down below. It helps me out tremendously. Subscribe for more gaming content, and as always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash Dry Bear come by and say hi. All right, let's get started with the claw blade. This is probably the flashiest weapon in the game. And it is, I like to think of it as the attack on Titan weapon, because you have a grapple hook that you can use to grapple into targets and you spend a lot of time in the air, which is super, super fun. As a reminder, if you're ever looking to test out a new weapon, you can go up to any of the training bears. There's one inside of Minato in the main city. There's also one on the first map right outside of the cave base. And you can also use your Dragon Karakuri to make as many bears as you want, whenever you want, wherever you want to test them out. And you can walk up to them and activate the train feature. The one in Minato has extra functions for it, but out in the world, you can just have a train for it. Uh, this, will, this will allow you to turn on attack tutorials. And if you do that and activate the training, it will start a damage show for you. And if it has attack tutorials on, you'll be able to, it'll walk you through the basic combos and functions of the weapon, which is super nice for any weapon you're trying to learn. So let's begin with the claw blade. Your basic functions are pretty straightforward. You actually have a very straightforward uh, tr a square combo. I'm gonna use the PS4 controls because that's what I'm using right now. I'm on PC with a PS4 controller. You can easily translate that to mouse and keyboard or uh, Xbox, depending on what you're using. This is your this is your normal attack, your attack one, and it's just a spammable combo that you can use to attack. It's very fast. It ends in five hits. Is your five hit chain, and it does damage, uh, and it, you know functions just that way. So then when that ends, that's what you have, and you'll be using this to kind of just build meter and uh, focus on basic attacks. And then you have your second attack in your normal state, which is going to be a flip attack. If you don't put any direction input in, it'll make you jump backwards in the attack. If you put a direction in, it'll move in that direction and then finish with a slash, which is super nice to move around attacks. If you see them moving around, you can go around it early. It gives you lots of free motion. It's very, very flexible. You can also use it to kind of combo things together. So once you finish a combo, you can go straight into the other combo, attack two, flip over and do that that way. And that's the basic of the weapon before you get into the mechanics of it. And the attacks are, are very straightforward. The complexity with this weapon comes in managing your meter and staying airborne. So um, if you look at the bottom left above my health bar, you'll see there's this blue bar that has a meter on it. When you attack a target or deal damage for any reason, that bar will fill up. That bar refers to your grapple hook. So actually, if depending on how full it is, when you grapple to a target, you'll be able to have length of time where the grapple stays attached that is exactly equal to that bar down there for that meter. You attach in many ways. The first one is going to be using your R2, your claw plunge. So you can activate R2, you'll jump forward and slash. Wherever it connects, you will have this grapple hook that attaches the target and stays attached for the, the duration of time that is equal to the bar length of meter that you had. And while this is up, your target will be locked to your screen and you can move around and then you'll just be kind of stayed on the attached side for that, which is super cool. And you can walk up to the target and you can keep hitting it if you want and do different attacks. But the magic of Claw Blade comes when you go into the air. So you can stay actually attached to the target and your motion in the air will change into special actions while you have a target that is tethered. So when you go up into the air and dodge, you'll actually move around in an orbit around the target. We have full meter again. We're going to use our R2 to attach, and then we can go up in the air. And if we see like we're in danger, we can use the dodge to go in multiple directions. It will stay in a circular motion around the target. But if you're in the air and you activate R2 again, it'll pull you into the target. And if you use either your attack one, which is square or triangle for attack two, then you can actually do all kinds of really cool combos. So full meter again, we're going to attach, you can jump out. And then if you pull yourself into the target and attack one, you'll do a horizontal slash. If you pull yourself into the target and attack two, you'll do this upward vertical slash uh, that goes, goes around and deals damage that way. And you'll be able to stay on the target depending on what you have, which is super nice. And you'll notice that as I perform these aerial combos, you'll actually start to glow. So as you glow higher and higher and get more and more 
meter building up from your aerial attacks. You'll eventually activate the full meter, and if you use your attack 2 to finish the combo, you'll do what I just did, which was this combo finisher. You'll dash through the target, deal damage, have this execute X, and do a bo big boost of damage at the very end. But that's not all. So if we attach again with full meter, we've got our uh, opportunity to attack here. We'll go in and we'll notice that as this fills up and I start to glow, the length of time that you're able to stay near the target, it's kind of annoying with the bear because he's kind of small, but as you start to glow, your, your aerial attacks here will start to last longer and longer and longer and longer. And you'll be able to stay on the target, rotating around them constantly, doing more and more damage, and those combos last longer. Especially on the large kimonos like the boar, you can just rotate around them like a can opener, doing more and more and more damage and extending that for as long as you have stamina. And then if you're fully charged in your meter, you can then execute the final execute by using your attack too and finishing them off that way. But as you might have guessed, that's not the only way to attach to your target. You can also use your Karakuri, which is super nice. One of the best ways to do this is using your box Karakuri. Depending on how, how tall the tower is, it will give you free meters. So say I was at zero meter right now. If I use a three tall, uh, it, it gives you almost full meter from landing this, but you will go and hit, get on top of the tower, jump, and you'll do a plunging attack that when you connect, will give you a connection. So you'll be able to connect to the target and start your aerial combo based on that. But right now I have zero meter. We can use a three tall, jump forward, and then we can land. And that way we can, you know, if we don't land on that on accident, we'll be able to just get some extra meter out of that and start the aerial combo, which is pretty nice. You can also use stakes and the glider. The stake functions just like the box as well. So when you land on top of it, it connects, you go up into the air, and then you'll be able to do the plunge attack from that as well. But what's even better than all of those is the glider, which allows you to pinpoint where you grapple to the target. So if you activate the glider and you go up and then you hold your uh, R2, you'll actually slowly drift down to the ground and you can target where you want the grapple to land. And this is useful if there's specific parts of the monster that you want to target or break with your claw blade. So you can actually get parts broken or do bonus damage to the target. It also works if you just kind of want to, you know, hit them with the claw plunge here to land on the target. And of course, you can use the targeting feature if you use your uh, right analog stick in. You can actually tab through all the different parts of the monster and get it there. But if you're struggling to get the just the right link to the target, you're just a specific spot you're trying to hit, and you don't want to plunge attack it, then you can just use the glider, spawn the glider, jump up in the air, hold the right trigger, and it'll give you that, that aim. And so I say I want to hit the head. I can hit the head, land on top of it, and then just go to town starting to smash it up. If at any point you want to end your tether, you can just land on the ground and then sheathe your weapon. If you put it away, it'll break the tether. You can move around. Although, if you have enough meter to go off of, you can start using the dodge. You actually have some really insane iframes when you're using the aerial orbit rotation. So even on the big monsters, I found it works really well. Uh, if there's a big attack coming your way and you time it, you'll get enough iframes to rotate around and get out of the attack. You can even use things like the bulwark to knock people down, use the firework or the pounder to get some extra value, or even the chain trap to get them stuck in place. And that's how you use the grapple itself. But there are other options for dealing damage. If you use the spring trap and you attack forward, you'll do a vortex or horizontal slash that will get you to deal damage to the target that way. And it is a nice way to kind of get around if you really need to. You can just get some bonus damage on the target. You won't be grappled, but it will build up uh, some extra damage that you need. For basic combo management, you can actually find a safe place to plant. And if you really, you know, you're just starting out with the claw blade, you can use your basic combo. Keep in mind that the longer the combos go, whether it's aerial or on the ground, you will start to glow. So if you're in the air, you know, you start to glow orange. That gives you your longer combos while you're dealing uh, damage in the air. And it eventually will give you the special uh, end. But if you're on the ground and you haven't grappled yet, you actually will start to glow yellow the more that you hit a, a, a consecutive combo. So I can land here and break this to reset my meter. And then I can walk up and I can do some really straightforward combos that allow me to really start glowing. And you can see that as I start to glow yellow, you'll, you'll get more and more meter for your combo attacks, which is really nice. And it'll give you some really easy ways to uh, you know deal damage, get that meter stacked up really fast. And then you can go straight into your plunge, connect to the target, and get your grapple out. The simple of the, simplest of these is just to do your five hit chain on the ground with this and use either a jump or your second attack in order to reposition. 
Remember, every time you use the triangle or your Y or whatever it is on PC, you'll be able to get the reposition. And you can actually use jumps and dodges to connect combos really easily as well. One of the best of those is going to be the jumps. You'll notice that if I do this combo, I can jump at any time to break the combo. And you can also just go straight into aerial attack. So a very simple, straightforward combo here is to walk into the target. You can stay on the ground, deal some damage. Then you can jump and use your second attack to spin back down to the ground. You can also jump up in the air. This is great because a lot of times a weak point will be slightly off the ground. If you're looking for a target, you jump in the air, do this combo. Then you land on the ground, jump immediately, start doing your, your bit here. You can give yourself some air time to get some distance if you need to. Go straight back down to the ground, jump back up, straight back down to the ground, jump back up. And usually two or three rotations of that and you'll have a full meter and you'll be ready to just get right back into the grapple attached jump up in the air and start moving into your aerial combos and that's the claw blade it's super fun once you get it and keep in mind that you get a lot of benefit for extending your combos as much as you can not only do you get the the faster meter building if you have extended combos when you're sitting on the ground but you also get the glow when you're in the air in the aerial stance and what's cool about that is the longer you attached you get inside of it these get longer and longer i've had extremely long combos on this on the especially on the bigger mobs that are very easy to stay attached to you will end up doing um your your combo spins here for a long time and it'll start rotating around them as well if they have a lot of hit boxes you'll start breaking multiple parts and if it feels like you're a beyblade or a can opener just running around the target so once you're in the air you probably want to use your attack too to be able to just kind of use that horizontal rotation but depending on where you are and where you hit the target, you will get some extra rotation, either vertical or horizontal. And one last thing I'll give you with as well, this is actually quite useful, is if you are attached to the target for any reason, and then you dash into them, you need reposition, you can actually, as you come into the target, you'll bounce off targets that you hit. So if you land on something, um, like say there's a wall in between you and them, you can use that wall to land on and bounce off which is really nice. So you can actually get, you can hook onto them, bounce back, land in. If you don't attack, like you just pull yourself in on the bigger kimonos, you'll put your feet on it and bounce off, which will keep your stamina. You can rotate around and try again if you feel like there's a bad way, uh, a bad attack coming your way. But that's the claw blade, the basics, the combos, the function, the, kar the karakuri, and everything in between. This weapon is so much fun to play with. And when you get it right, it is probably one of the, flashiest, most sexiest weapons you can use in the game itself. So I hope you guys have fun. If there's other guides for Wild Hearts or any game you're looking for, leave me a comment down below. And as always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Come by and say hi. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.